Uh, okay, so I'm going to just share a few short stories. Um, I'm going to call them episodes of being me. Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. So one bright, sunny Alabama day, which is where I live and work these days, I needed to visit HR to change the bank um, for my reimbursement form, so I had to change my bank. Um, not knowing where to go, I consulted the campus directory and found that the office was on the third floor of a building that I knew. Upon entering the building, I started to look around for the elevator stairs because it was on the third floor. Um, a receptionist near the front door greeted me with a friendly good morning. I said good morning and I asked if she could point me to the elevator. She politely informed me that HR was down the hall and that I would need to fill out my forms there. I replied then that I was in search of the finance office and that it was on the third floor. She then insisted that I needed instead to follow the signs to HR. Having encountered this problem before at another location, at another university, I recognized the issue. And I stated to the receptionist that my name was Dr. Joy Robinson. And I was looking for the finance office. I queried, is that not on the third floor? I received no reply, just a steady stare. I found the elevator myself. Next slide, thank you. I am the poster child. On my first day of campus, the photographer called to schedule a photo shoot. I met the photographer in the union where he wanted to photograph me playing video games, because I do games. This shoot went well, and in less than a week, my face was on the front page of the school website and the newsletter. My face remained on the website for the better part of the entire year. Last semester, a photographer showed up at my classroom for pictures. After spending the entire period taking pictures, they were then posted to my department's webpage and its newsletter. My face also appears on brochures and on other flyers. But on my campus, African-American professors make up less than 2% of the academic faculty. Next slide, please. Thank you. Last semester, my school made an offer to an African-American chemist. As she was making her decision, the assistant dean thought it prudent to have her meet other African-American female faculty on campus. A series of doodle polls indicated that dinner was the best time for us all. Uh, I arrived first, and Sharifa was the name of the faculty member. She was in the parking lot. I chatted with her as the others began to arrive. We all converged at the table around the same time and settled in to order dinner, sit, and chat. As the waitress bought us our menus, I looked up and realized that everyone who was coming was already there. One of the other faculty members led the charge, introducing Sharifa, and we went around the table providing our titles and our research interests. It was then that I noticed that our table could sit 10 people and that the entire black female faculty fit at that table with room to spare. Sharifa accepted the position, but it will be a while before we need a bigger table. My next thought is a simpler one. Just how hard is it to find a scholar who can teach African American studies who is also African American? It seems like we can manage to find a woman to teach feminist studies. Next slide. Last ATTW conference, I met a graduate student who was eager to talk about her work. She was a TechCom student interested in studying TechCom programs at historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs. I thought to myself, what an interesting project. That was until I found out that HBCUs don't have technical and professional programs. Cindy Self once asked me, what do we need to do to attract more academics of color to CNW? Maybe starting with the HBCUs is a good place. On that same thought, this young lady was seemingly the only African-American student attending ATTW that year. I'm rem I remember thinking, well, at least there was one. I took her out to dinner. Next, please. As a female professor of color, my students have different expectations of me. My office is a small square space with superhero posters on the door and action figures on the shelves. I have an open door policy. I practice this by leaving my door open as much as possible while I'm working. My office location is ideal for student traffic um, and distractions, of course, because I sit directly across from the English department. 
Students walking by my office, they often wave or knock or just stop in. Uh, one student walking by did a double take. Next slide, please. Oh, go back. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, did a double tag like there was a big blue elephant in the room. Then knocking politely on my door jam, he asked if he might come in. He took in the toys, he took in the posters, and he took in me, the professor. He stood speechless for a few moments before he asked if it would be okay to stop by sometimes and just talk. He went on to say that he had yet to see an African-American professor on campus. I told him drop by any time that my door was always open and any time he felt that he needed to chat, he could. He smiled broadly and said his goodbyes. He took my class the next semester. Next slide. Once I sent a class email to various students to remind them about a particular missed assignment, one response from a student voice, one response was from a student voicemail. Um, on the recording, one of the two African-American female engineering students in the class explained that she missed submitting an assignment because she was in the hospital. She apologized over and over and began to cry. Through a series of crying bouts, she reported that she had just had a baby and that she did not know she was pregnant. She had no idea. She hung up shortly thereafter. I stared at the phone for long minutes breathing slowly, trying to think more than just reacting. I knew she was not from the area. I knew she had no family in the vicinity and she had left her message on the phone. So then I wondered, should I call her back? I called her back. And then after the call, I realized that she went from being one of the few black female engineers to a single mother in what seemed like was overnight. This role is not a part of my official duties as an academic, but unofficially, it is a part of who I am. I, I lend an ear to all manner of students, staff, and adjuncts, lecturers who are struggling to fit into campus, keep up with their studies, manage their home life, and make good choices. Ultimately, I give the same kinds of advice as a mentor that I provide to my students as an instructor. This is a big, wide world, and we have to learn to live, to work, and to play in it. Thank you.